by Alfred Noy. The wind was a torrent of darkness among the crusty trees. The moon was a ghostly galley and tossed upon cloudy seas. The road was a ribbon of moonlight over a purple moor. And the highwayman came riding, riding, riding. The highwayman came riding up the old inn door. Over the cobbles he clattered and clashed in the dark inn yard. And he tapped with his whip on the shutters. The door was locked and barred. He whistled a tune to the window. And who should be waiting there but landlord's black-eyed daughter, Bess, the landlord's daughter, patting a dark red love knot in her long black hair. And dark in the dark old inn yard, a stable wicket creaked, where Tim the ostler listened. His face was white and was peak. His eyes were hollows and madness. His hair was like mouldy hay. But he loved the landlord's daughter, the landlord's red-lipped daughter. Dumb as a dog, he listened, and he heard the robber say, One kiss, my darling sweetheart, and after a prize tonight, thou shalt be back with the yellow gold before the morning light. Yet if they press me sharply, and hurry me through the day, then look to me by moonlight, watch me be by moonlight, I'll come to thee by moonlight through hell should bar the way. In the dawning, he did not come at noon, and out on the do- tawny sunset before the rise of the moon, when the road was a gypsy's ribbon looping the purple moor, a red coat crew came marching, marching, marching. King George's men came marching up to the old door. They had tied her up to a fence with many sniggering heads. They had bound and skinned the side of a barrel beneath her breast. Now keep good watch, and they kissed her. She heard the dead man say, Look for me by moonlight, watch me by moonlight, I'll come to thee bit by moonlight, though hell should be far the way. She twisted her hands behind her, jewel knots were held good. She whittled her hands t- till her fingers were wet with sweat or blood. They stretched and strained in the darkness, and the hours crawled by like years. Till now, on the stroke of midnight, cold on the stroke of midnight, the tip of one finger touched it. The trigger at least was hers. The tip of one finger touched it. She strove no more for the rest. Up, she stood up from, to attention with the barrel beneath her breast. She would not risk their hearing. She would not strive again. For, for, for the road lay bare in the moonlight, blank and bare in the moonlight, and the blood of her veins in the moonlight flopped to her, to her love's refrain. To lot, to lot in the frosty silence, to lot, to lot in the echoing night, nearer he came, and near it, her face was like a, a light. Her eyes grew wide for a moment. She drew at least, at last, one breath. Then her finger moved in the moonlight. She, her musket shattered the moonlight, shattered her breast in the moonlight, and warned him of her death. He turned, he scurried to the west. He did not know who stood, but bowed with her head oh a musket drenched with her own blood not till the dawn he heard it his face grew grey to hear now Bess the landlord's daughter the landlord's black eyed daughter had watched her for all her love in the moonlight and died in the darkness there and still the winter's night they say the wind is in the trees when the moon is a ghostly valley and tossed upon cloudy seas when the road is a ribbon of moonlight Purple moor, a highwayman, a highwayman comes riding, riding, riding. A highwayman comes riding up the organ door. Over the cobbles he clatters and clowns in the dark in yard. He taps with his whip on the shutters, but all is locked and barred. He whistles a tune to the window, and who should be waiting there? The landlord's black-eyed daughter, best landlord's daughter, batting a dark red blood knot in her long black hair.